You guys are being recorded as well. So. Does anybody know what this thing is? Have you seen one of these things before? On a door. You think it goes on a door? All right. Does anybody, got, anybody else have an idea? In a car? If I told you it was a barn trolley, would you have a better understanding? No. Oh, Isn't that one like wagon truck? just drawn something that is kind of a diagram that describes what this thing is used for, right? So if I were to write this phrase on the board, art is language, who could, who could uh, define or uh, explain what I mean by this, um, seeing what I've just done and then what I've just said. Can anyone describe what I mean by Hardy's language? <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. So some people are visual learners, some people are audio learners, some people learn through reading, some people learn through looking at pictures. Uh, if you're looking through your history book, you often see pictures of battles and things that went on. 
Uh, has anyone ever heard the term, the phrase, um, "pictures worth a thousand words"? Yeah. Why? Why is that? Why is a picture worth a thousand words? Because um, there's so much detail behind one picture, probably, that like, you can describe it with a thousand words. Yeah. More. Okay. Okay. So an artist uses visual imagery to uh, to tell you a story, right? And so you guys are all in art because you've enjoyed art, and you have a story that you want to tell, right? And you're in here learning how to tell that story through visual imagery. Well, perspective is a tool used to, to implement what you're trying to do. Perspective is a method used to create the illusion of space or depth in a two-dimensional surface. So this board is a two-dimensional surface. I have created the illusion of depth by drawing what appears to be a barn structure, two, two bales of hay, and some arrows that kind of dictate how the hay gets um, to the top of the barn using this, this object that I asked you to describe. So if I had said, use this, or describe this item using art, you might have tried to draw this, right? The next term that I've written up here is picture plane. Picture plane is something like this. I've just drawn a square around around my object. The flat two-dimensional surface on which we draw or project an image in perspective. Um, this is this is kind of an important thing that I see a lot of a lot of uh, young artists not doing, um, and I think that it's I think that it's something that you should think about every time you try to draw something on a blank sheet of paper. Um, draw, draw a square before you start drawing your object. Uh, the reason that you do this is because if you notice when I was drawing this, I drew this imaginary line across the image and I had these objects which I'm going to define as um, vanishing points. Um, they're off, they're off, the, um, they're off sorry, the picture plane and I need I need to understand this, but I may not want information beyond this area to be seen by the viewer. So this might be blurred out or erased at another point. And if I if I draw that on the paper, then someone looking at it might not understand that this is what's important in the picture. This is kind of a sketch, all right? If you guys understand sketching, it's easy to erase lines to just kind of quickly draw lines. And that's um, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing's perfect the first time you do it. But everyone kind of understands what's going on. So this object, that I, the line that I drew across here, is called your horizon line. All right. If I say horizon line, can someone uh, tell me what that means? What do you think of when you when you think of the word horizon? Like where the sun goes up and down. Yeah, okay. So if we're on a planet, which is a spherical object, and we're standing here. This is my little person. Embarrassing, huh? Tripod. Uh, and he's looking out this way. The horizon line is that kind of area where our visual sight and observation diminishes at the farthest point that we can see. Um, if I move towards the horizon line, is it going to, what? It moves. It moves. Okay, so you're saying if I go this way, that the horizon line then kind of creates there. Does it get smaller? No, it stays the same, right? So, um, in drawing, or in illustration, if you're that person and you're looking at the horizon line, this is termed your vantage point, all right? Or your eye level. Now, this is very important because in perspective, how you, where you are relevant to an object at the horizon line or in front of the horizon line is going to determine you know, what, what that object looks like, right? And that's what we're trying to render in a perspective drawing. We need to, we need to understand that if something's closer to you, it's going to appear larger. If something's farther away, it's going to appear smaller. And sometimes, uh, Ms. Frazier's probably told you, that happens in a thing we call overlap, right? Um, there's also
also a term called foreshortening. If something is closer to you and you're looking over the top of it, um, like, like if you're looking at my hand, my fist appears to be larger than my shoulder, maybe, because it's closer to you. And so in order to draw that in illustration, you need to understand, how would I change, how would I change my perspective if I was to look at an object like that? Oh, that was a simple way of something I could do to change my perspective. Move, yeah. So if I was looking at something straight on and I moved to the side, I'd be able to see the side of it instead of just looking at the front of it. That's another thing. Move the object. What about climbing, climbing a mountain, getting an airplane, laying on the ground. These are, all, these are all things that we can do to kind of change the way we look at things. And so what you guys are going to be doing today is you're going to be looking through some information that's going to describe different ways artists use to emulate what happens when you change your perspective and how they can draw that on a two-dimensional surface in order to make the viewer believe that three-dimensional space actually exists the way it does when we look at an object, right? So, um, Ms. Frazier also talked about space, also talked about linear perspective. Well, let's see. We'll talk about linear perspective. The last word is atmosphere. So, if I said linear, and atmospheric. Someone think would think linear would mean line. You see, you see the word line in the word linear, right? So linear perspective is actually using lines to create the illusion. Atmosphere, on the other hand, is, is different. What is what word is in atmosphere? Atmosphere. What is the atmosphere? The outermost layer of the Earth. So if this is our, this is our Earth. Then that that kind of area surrounding it and its molecular particles of air kind of trapped in the uh, in the outermost layer, which I don't know what that is. The uh, it's the atmosphere, the ozonosphere. There's multiple levels, but anyway, you've got you've got a land mass, and you've got water, and then you've got all this air kind of surrounding it, kind of holding it in, right? So atmospheric is the illusion that when you look at something like this and it's kind of farther away from you, a principle would be that it appears to diminish in detail. If you look out the window and I asked you to count the branches on the tree closest to you, would you be able to do it? Yeah, they've got 99. 99, yes. Or if I said, you know, if I were to say how many glass panes are in the window on that barn or that uh, school structure over there, you might not be able to see it because it's really far away and the principle of atmospheric perspective tells us that as things go away, they diminish in detail, all right? So these are two big, big topics for illustrators to understand the principles of perspective and making people be able to talk about and understand what an artist is trying to do. This is, uh, this is kind of a, an example of atmospheric perspective in that objects in the foreground are darker and as they get into the background they become lighter, right? Okay, so, fun is good. You guys, does anybody, does anybody like this thing? Yeah. No. So, who so, yeah, knows about steampunk? About what? Nope. Steampunk. What's steampunk? Uh, well, um, uh, I would say it's like taking modern things from vintage, like I would say, uh -huh. and incorporating things like gears and pins into objects, stuff like that. Yeah, it's kind of an arc movement that's happened in the last 10, 12 years, uh, and it's, it's specifically about looking at industrial revolution technology and kind of taking it apart, reapplying it in an aesthetic 
um, to make to make costumes and art uh, with gears, like you said, and um, and those parts that would come from industrial revolution uh, type machinery. Uh, the cool thing about this is that this was made in the 20s, and it, again, it's a utilitarian object, but it's very decorative, right? It's got these curves, it's got all of these all of these lines that that necessarily wouldn't have to be curved. It, it's harder to make this than it would be to just make a straight line of metal. Um, so the, the person who engineered this and, and designed this took great effort in, in their artistic creativity to, to build this thing. Um, and they don't, we don't do that anymore in America. It's kind of sad, you know? Because uh, why, why would something like this in the top of a barn it's only going to be seen by, you know, a couple people up here and a couple people down here be important aesthetically. I don't know. It's not a car, you know, it's not something that you're showing off to people, right? It's not like a, it's not like somebody that buys and sells art is going to go to that barn and be like, oh wow, you know, look at this. But the guy who made it, the person who designed it, said, I want this thing to look awesome. I really, really am proud of, of my art, and I want I want people, anybody who sees this, to be appreciative of it. And all those people building hay probably looked at it and said, that thing's kind of cool. You know? And now we, as a future society, are looking back on things like this and going, how can I incorporate that back into art? How can I, how can I draw inspiration from the lines on this? Why is this indention here, right? Why is there, why is the screw place there, you know, the scrolling around this, the H70, it's, uh, it's a movement. So, um, a reason, another reason this is important is if you own a house, right? Who plans on owning a house someday? I'll plan on renting a house. All right, or, or renting, yeah. So when you go to that house and you're inside of it, you are going to see empty rooms and you're going to think, am I going to be able to get all my furniture? In that room, I don't know. I think my dress is too, too deep. If I put my bed here, right in the middle, am I going to be able to put my dresser right here? Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the distance from this entire space from here to here is is uh, what, what we, 15 feet or something. Right. Well, my bed's you know my bed's seven feet wide or five. Five feet wide, I got a king size bed, right? So it's like way, way big. Well, if this dresser is too wide, then you you not gonna fit that in there. And why why haul this heavy dresser into this room to just figure this out, right? So interior designers use perspective to draw rooms like this. You guys have ever watched the um, reconstructing home shows? Yeah. 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 Well, so um, some of you might be interested in this. And so architects use this when they're rendering uh, buildings for conceptualizations of what, what's going up this school. An, art, uh, an illustrator and architect drew this school out in plans before someone said, okay, we can build that on this property, right? So that's why this stuff is important. So we're going we're gonna to move into groups, and I'm going to hand you guys... Everyone's going to, each group's going to get a packet, all right? And the packet feels kind of thick. It's not, it's not complicated. The words are really big. Not every page has a ton of words on it, all right? So don't be intimidated when you grab this. What I want you guys to do is I want you to, at first, flip through it, all right? As you flip through it, you're going to kind of get a gist of what it is. I'm flipping to this one, and it is instructions on how to understand one point perspective all right so in the group each person is going to be responsible for one um, one activity all right so what you're going to do is you're going to get you're going to get in your group oh we need an eraser so bad sorry sorry right. okay you're going to get in the group you're going, to, you're going to flip through this packet, and then you're going to decide what the, what the skills are of each person in your group, all right? You're going to 
decide who's a writer, all right? Who's an illustrator? Uh, who's a speaker? Who has the best speaking voice? Who's the most confident in standing up in front of people and speaking? And then you're going to decide who's the administrator. And this part's pretty important, okay? I'm going to come around and help you guys understand a little bit what's going on. But if you guys have a question, you guys need to decide who the administrator is and who this person is that's going to ask the questions, all right? So I'm going to hand everyone a piece of paper, and I want you to write the names of the people that are in your group. And I want you to write out who's going to be the writer. You guys have any ideas? Are we in our groups yet? No. When you're, in, when you're in your groups. Yeah, some, we might be close, but there are a few. You have that sheet, and I'll go ahead and get them in there. Yeah. Um, all right, so wait, listen up, guys. Don't catch yet. So the administrator is going to be the person that, that speaks with me about questions, all right? So we're not having a bunch of questions all come up at the same time. Think about which questions are most important, all right? And as you're looking through these packets, what I want you to do is I want you, some of them are instructions on how to create perspective using one, two, three point perspective. Some are just general information about what atmospheric perspective is. Um, and so as you go through there, you need to write down key points, all right? You also need to draw. Everyone's going to be responsible for turning in a paper that shows me that they understand what's going on in their packet. Um, and then, when we, when we actually present this information, because we're going to be teaching what we've read to the other students in the class, we're going to need to be able to write those key terms on the board. We're going to need to be able to illustrate in a poster sense what exactly is going on, just like I've kind of done. We're going to, someone's going to be speaking and telling what's going on, and the administrator is going to make sure all of this information is correct and make sure that these people are doing what they need to do and that the teacher is, is uh, either myself or Ms. Frazier, is helping you in the most efficient way possible, okay? So after lunch, well, I'm going to hand out, you're going to get your groups, and then we're going to kind of flip through this. If you want to start reading, you can do that. Um, and then we're going to go to lunch. And when we come back, you're going to spend, you know, 10 to 15 minutes understanding what's going on in your packet and then you're going to uh, start copying down the information drawing, and then tomorrow I'll have sheets for you to kind of fill out the most key points information and decide how we're going to do this.